if you go to Cancun and you don't eat at Harry's, I'm gonna say you didn't do Cancun. <laughs> now that's a bold statement, right? Go to Harry's and then tell me if you feel the same way. So I'm going there. Again, it's dark, modern, cool, trendy, comfortable. The service is like having your own personal butlers. Butlers, plural. The menu reads like a Christmas wish list. Just wait till you see the things that I read off. And most importantly, the food is almost indescribable. So when the weather turns bad, to here as we go. Back from Harry's, and before I get into the meal, I wanna say that the house music in there was really loud. It was too loud to blog or narrate. So I'm just gonna go through the video on my phone. What I am seeing, you are seeing. Uh, I was going through my restaurant Rolodex about places that I'm really excited to go to. Restaurants. Restaurants I'm really excited to go to every single time. The meal never ever disappoints. It's a guaranteed hit every single time. And I wanna go back immediately. So. Let's go through my mental Rolodex about which restaurants fit that criterion. There are only a few that I can think of, just off, just off the top of my head. So number one would be Manny's in Minnesota. The second one would be Rocco's Tacos in Orlando, the Orlando Rocco's Tacos location. And then my third one would be Novikov in London. In London, the Novikov in Miami is nothing compared to Novikov in London. If you like Novikov in Miami, which are, which is some people's favorite restaurant, Go to London one and I promise you, <clears throat> you'll never go to Novikov in Miami again. It's that good. But yeah, those are the three. And uh, I'd put Harry's in that in that peer, in that peer group because it, it was so awesome. So you walk in and you can see that the place is really dark, really cool, really trendy, and also has a Caribbean type theme to it. There is some foliage in there and, and some bright elements. They've somehow been able to fuse like bright elements and a dark atmosphere. They've done it really, really well. So you walk in and immediately they have things on display for you to see and I like that. It's like a showcase. It's like a like a trade show. It's like a display. And they are showcasing some of their finest cigars, some of their finest cuts of beef, some of their finest liquors, some of their finest seafood. Um, you, you see this Iberico ham right there. I had no idea what that was. Uh, I knew they had a Iberico ham on the menu but I didn't know that that was it right there and it's displayed. And I think that was really, really neat you have um, a purview into the kitchen. And I like transparent kitchens. Transparent kitchens give off a sign of confidence. They give, give off a sign of class and they give off a sign of perfection. If you can see what they're doing, they have to be perfect every single time. So I really like that. I feel like it keeps them honest. It keeps them in check and it really gives a sense of confidence and security in the meal. So I like to sit at the bar. Uh, that's a little known hot spot in Harry's. Is, is the bar area. You're gonna get a, a fantastic and fabulous dining experience no matter where you sit. Um, you're gonna get multiple waiters waiting on you if you sit down at the restaurant, but the bar, it's more folksy, it's more of a brethren. I like it, I got no problem walking in there alone and having a proper meal. So I started things off, no surprise, the pina colada. It may be my favorite drink of all time. No shame in my game. I got no problem ordering a pina colada wherever I go, and I've done it. I've embarrassed a few people. Um, I do order them at steakhouses when they are on the menu. I had pina coladas all week, all week in Cancun. I, I, I took down who knows how many. I had them at the Ritz Carlton. I had them at the JW Marriott. I had them here at the Westin. I've had them at a, at a bevy of other places. This one was told to me by the bar staff that it was the best one in Cancun. And everyone says that. How can Harry's be better than the one at, uh, at the Ritz Carlton? And how can Harry's be better than the one at the, at the JW Marriott? This was the best pina colada I had all week. 
Uh, I like the, uh, the drizzle on the pineapple and the accent the cherries, but the most important thing, the drink was delectable. It was really rich, really creamy, no shortage of calories. But uh, if you are looking for the best pina colada in Cancun, you gotta go to a steakhouse to get it. That steakhouse is Harry's. This, this bread is very akin to the bread at STK. The STK bread is a little better, but the condiments here at Harry's are better. So uh, they give you like a, a, a honey butter, and then they give you three styles of dips. Uh, they give you a mild avocado and then two, two salsas, one medium and then one extra spicy. So no matter where your palate is, if you like to be traditional with, with, uh, with butter, you can do that. Uh, if you want to have a little guacamole, you can do that, a little guac guacamole um, dip. And then you have a, a medium and a really spicy salsa. So I started with the steak tartare, and this has changed at Harry's. I've ordered this before, and it didn't have the table side presence, the table side presentation that they have now. I'll just quickly go through it. Mustard goes in first, then the egg, then some olive oil. Uh, there's some Worcestershire sauce that went in there. A little bit more olive oil. And then uh, all the spices go in there. And then he whips it. And he whipped it pretty vigorously. That's what gives great steak tartare that whipped, effervescent, light type of uh, feeling to it. It comes out, uh, <laughs> you really have to like meat to enjoy this dish. Me, I'm a huge steak tartare person. If you would have told me a decade ago I'd be eating steak tartare, I would have said absolutely not, but uh, it has grown on me immensely. And when I see it on the menu, I go to it like a, like a moth to a flame. It is so great. And this is the best prepared steak tartare I've ever had in my life. If you are a fan of that delicacy and you are a, a fan of, uh, of table side presentation, you have to get it. The other table side thing I did was the Iberico ham. Uh, again, when I walked in, I didn't know that was the, Iber the Iberico ham, but, it, but obviously it was when they rolled it over to me. Uh, what was really neat about this was the precision. Uh, I mean, first of all, the meat is out of this world. I mean, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but this, this is right from Spain. It's highly, highly lauded. It is some of the best meat in the world. Like if, if someone, if you were to ask someone what the best ham in the world is, this would come back in a lot of responses and maybe with some of the best meat in the world. Um, so they wheel it over and the way he just cut this, it was surgical with such precision. So you can see he's laying it on there very meticulously, very methodically. And I think this was about 3.5 again, or four ounces. I think most of these table side most of these experiences were 3.5 or 4 ounces. It looked a lot bigger than what it was when we laid it on the plate. I was like, wow, I'm gonna be able to finish all this. But uh, yeah, it's it's really paper thin. And what, what makes it so special, besides the taste, which I'll get to in a second, was is the marbling. It almost looks like it's candied, but it's not candied. That's the way it comes naturally after, it, after it's cured and cooked. But you see those, those uh, flakes and speckles on there that's on there naturally. That's on there naturally. So uh, I've never had this meat before, ever. This was a first for me. And clearly this was uh, not only the first time I had the meat, but the first time I've seen it prepared for me. And I'm really glad I got to see how they did it because it gives me a lot of respect for the process, the dish, and the culinary experience. Those, those specs were just amazing. So what did it taste like? This is gonna be a really rudimentary description but it's, it's pretty accurate. If you go and have this, I think you would come back and say, James, you're right on the money. So it has the thinness of prosciutto, but it has the texture and rigidity of beef jerky. So think, and, and taste. So think of like prosciutto meets beef jerky and then expand that exponentially in terms of taste. It would be like the very best beef jerky you've ever had in your life. That's what it is. The very best beef jerky you've ever tasted. So if you're a fan of ham, beef jerky, smoked cured meats, you definitely have to do this. For me, as scintillating as the steak tartare presentation was, this Iberico ham was just was, was on another level. It was by far the most memorable dish I had of the night. All right, so I'm making my way through the menu pretty well. Um, thankfully, I'm not ordering too much because I know I have a steak coming and here is that steak. It's a 14 ounce prime USDA certified steak, cooked medium rare. Uh, ribeye is, is probably my favorite cut. 
Uh, you just get the intense marbling and then you also get the intense taste. So uh, when I'm on a diet, I'm typically going with a filet mignon, but when I am uh, on vacation, I typically go with a ribeye. So there is that. I like the uh, little onions on the side. And then I did the cream corn. So you can see the thick pieces of salt on top. When I cut it open, you can see it was cooked to perfection. And the interesting thing about the steak is that I took half of it home. I ate half and took half of it home because I knew I wasn't going to be able to eat all of it because I had the two large appetizers and then the steak and then the cream corn. The steak was like candy the next day. I took it out of the refrigerator and just ate it like a barbarian. Just cold, didn't even heat it up or anything. It was like candy. It tasted so good. It almost like the marbling and the grease it like cured itself to another level. And uh, it was really, really enjoyable. So. That is my meal at Harry's, and I, I've said it before, and it sounds really bombastic, and it sounds like almost hyperbole, and you know, just intense exaggeration, but it's not. It is the truth, is that I would say go to Harry's. If you haven't been, go to Harry's, and then tell me next time you go to Cancun if you're not going back. It's just that unbelievable. I almost promise that you will, or really, really want to.